Well, I promised you four videos today. I think it's actually gonna be five because you're now getting this one as a bonus. That's annoying, isn't it? <laughs> Parking ticket. I, just, I found a lovely little coffee shop that I like to use. I've been keeping an eye on my car all morning. And um, yeah, I must have just missed the parking warden. I hate that. It'll be a council one as well, which means you have to pay it. You don't have to pay private ones, do you? Anyway, um, whilst I move locations, uh, Quinton Wilson has been tweeting this morning about the demise of Top Gear. So let's have a little bonus chat about the demise of Top Gear. Quinton Wilson has just tweeted saying he can't believe that mainstream TV doesn't have an appetite for a proper telly car show. How can Quentin Wilson possibly be questioning why mainstream telly doesn't have an appetite for a decent petrol head car show? He spends most of his time spouting utter rubbish about electric vehicles. He's in cahoots with that absolute nutter Robert Llewellyn from the Fully Charged show. And I've got a lot of respect for Quentin Wilson because I've followed him since I was a kid, genuinely, since I was watching old format Top Gear. I've met him on a number of occasions in different contexts, and I even have a signed original Jaguar S-Type brochure signed by Quentin Wilson for me from the Birmingham International Motor Show. You're probably going back 30 years, but for him to be saying, why doesn't the mainstream media have an appetite for a proper car show? Because the mainstream media is following the same agenda that the fully charged show are following, which is push EVs to the detriment of real cars. This is the thing. I have always firmly believed that the push to electric vehicles is more about getting us out of our cars. That's the plan. It's not to do with giving us a better motoring experience, what I'd like to see from some of these mainstream TV personalities is to actually stand up for road users. Let's talk about road works. Let's talk about average speed limits. Let's talk about the rise and rise of cameras and AI facial recognition being discussed to go everywhere, to catch motorists from doing everything. There doesn't seem to be anyone who's actually standing up for the motorist. A lot of these people just want to get their big TV contracts and that's it. No one actually wants to do any good for real people. Now I'm going this way to change locations, but I'm, there's a road closed. What a surprise. Imagine that, a road closure. And we saw this yesterday in my Surrey Sucks video. This is up and down the country. So who's helping us out? Who of the big names are actually gonna stand up and do something? So let's talk for a little minute about what has happened to Top Gear? Basically, what you had with Clarkson, Hammond and May is three guys who all started out as writers. Yes, they had a writing team as well, but they're essentially writers, but mostly they're car guys. Get rid of Clarkson, Hammond and May, and what have you got? You've got new format Top Gear. They could not get three presenters who worked properly together, and they couldn't get three presenters who you universally want to watch. In its latest format, we've got what? Chris Harris, who's a writer and a car guy. Chris Harris is great. Chris Harris on cars, brilliant on YouTube, really geeky, superb. But Chris, at the minute, you need to have a shave, mate. You're looking a little bit homeless. Freddie Flint's off. He was all right. I didn't mind watching Freddie. But Paddy McGuinness, oh, he's just unwatchable, isn't he? Not only that, but he knows naff all about cars. So when they'd be doing one of their Top Gear challenges, which, let's be honest, that's what we're all there for, since original Top Gear did the Botswana challenge, all we want to watch is Top Gear challenges. I watched them over and over again, the original Top Gear. Let's say new Top Gear is on a challenge, they cut to Chris Harris's car and he's got something interesting to say, and they cut to Freddie Flintoff's car and he's got something interesting to say and something that's quite funny and it's quite watchable, and they cut to Paddy McGuinness, and first I hit mute and then I got to turn it off. I haven't watched any of them, and I'm a huge Top Gear fan, but I cannot watch bad presenters presenting badly. It got too woke, and it got rubbish. They just couldn't find a format that worked because they were trying to copy a format that only worked with Clarkson, Hammond, and May. So why haven't we got a decent car show? Because nobody's yet worked out how to do it. All TV producers seem to want to do is replicate what's already out there. They want to use established figures 
and they want to use established formats. So we've basically got two types of show. You've got buy it, bodge it, fix it, which is, which is essentially wheeler dealers. So why would anybody want to watch another version of wheeler dealers when wheeler dealers have already got the market cornered? Then you've got the classic car auction stuff, um, and then you've got Top Gear. So what we need now is a new style of tele show with some new presenters who bring fresh ideas to the table. And I'm not saying that's me, absolutely, because I can't imagine that any TV producer is going to be brave enough to put Jeff buys cars on telly just in case Jeff buys cars can't shut his mouth. But the point is, when Lee, the MacMaster, and myself did our John O'Groats to Land's End Challenge EV versus Diesel, the playlist that I put together, I think it was about eight videos in the end, has had almost a million views, and that is two blokes with two iPhones and hardly any budget. Yes, it costs us a little bit of money to do that trip, but when you compare that to the type of money that they put into these TV telly car shows, it's minuscule. There's no production um, costs at all, and it took me one day to get pretty much everything up and edited. Now, if I can do that with an iPhone, and I can sit back and read comments from people saying amazing things like, this is as good as Top Gear in their prime. I don't think it was. And then people saying, oh, I'm looking forward to part two as much as I look forward to a new episode of the Grand Tour. That's insane. You know, people saying, oh, you just need one more person and then, and then you're like the original Top Gear. All my life, all I've ever wanted to do is the same thing that Jeremy Clarkson does. So for you guys to be writing in the comments that that video was as good as Top Gear, there is no bigger compliment for me. That, as far as I'm concerned, I've made it. To read comments like that, nothing better for me. Absolutely done, highlight of my year. Fantastic. We weren't trying to be Top Gear, we weren't trying to be anything. It's just two mates who enjoy cars making a video. And that is the original Top Gear format. So why, Quinton Wilson, haven't we got any appetite from the mainstream telly for a car show? Because as I said, they're following the agenda and the agenda is to get us out of our cars and into 15 minute cities. They do not want you going anywhere, so why would they want a TV show that glorifies owning something that allows you to go wherever you want, whenever you want? Please, Mr. Wilson, wake up and get with the programme and understand the harm that you are doing to motoring every time you appear on the Fully Charged show with Robert the Nutter promoting electric vehicles. Do you not get it? Why haven't we got any new TV shows? Because there's no desire for TV to promote freedom of choice and freedom of motoring. I'd love to spend my life making challenge videos, Top Gear challenge videos, it'd be brilliant. But even the, the car stuff that I do, you know, I did a video last week with Lee where we went for fish and chips. Hardly gets any views compared to some of the other stuff I do on the channel, but that's where my passion is. Car Trek in the USA, that was essentially a few well-known YouTubers buying crap old cars and driving across the country. Brilliant. Let's do it in the UK. Get some YouTubers who know car stuff, who are fun to watch and have channels that are growing, see if they work well together, do a challenge, thousand pound, buy a car, off you go. If not, Lee and I will just keep doing it. We are gonna do a thousand pound car challenge, that is coming. Do you like my coat? It's really warm. I like my big winter boots that I'm wearing right now that make it incredibly difficult to drive. Wow, look at that, a bonus video in the middle of the day that was sort of a rant. Oh look, I'm driving past another massive hole drilled into the road. How many sets of traffic lights have I done in this video? I might have to watch it back and find out. But anyway, I just want to, oh yeah, the last thing was, when I called Quinton Wilson out about all of this on Twitter, and I said to him, why is there no appetite for a TV, proper TV, telly car show? Uh, well, you, as a journalist, have as your header picture, a photo of you in front of the Stop Burning Stuff sign with a microphone. He must have been on one of Robert's crazy conferences. And I said to him, you've literally got a picture of yourself in front of a Stop Burning Stuff banner. Why do you think nobody's taking you seriously when you say, why isn't there a car show? He's not yet replied, but he has changed his, uh, he has changed his Twitter header image. <laughs> and I think that was down to me. Right, thank you very much. I'm going to go now and get my Volkswagen ID Buzz 
uh, clickbait thumbnail design. That video is going up next, and we still are on track to do four videos today with this as a bonus fifth video. Wow, you get good value for money when you subscribe to Jeff Buys Cars, don't you? So please do subscribe to Jeff Buys Cars. Hope you do like my coat. I'm designing a Jeff Buys Cars Christmas jumper. That I'm hoping is gonna be on my store tomorrow. And I'm getting up very, very early tomorrow to do this challenge with Lee. So, if you're missing Top Gear, Friday night at 8 p.m., my challenge with Lee is going to go up on YouTube. EV versus diesel, a 200 mile road trip. Which one of us gets there first? Which one of us uses the least money? Thanks for watching this uh, rant.